I think it's a great competition. Um, I like the three series. I like it that one person has one dog because I've been there. I know how it feels to come to the line and either do great or just blow up. They're dogs. They're gonna give their best, whether it's bad or whether it's great. That's what a dog is. They gave it 100%, it may just not be the 100% you needed that day. I like it as a one dog, one man competition, you know, where, where you pick your best dog out of your, your truck and put them up against everybody, you know, and, and that's the way it is. So it, it is old school, you know, because I'm pulling Wendy out, you know, and I'm coming to the line on there, I'm, I'm gonna kick your butt, you know. This dog right here can do it and my teammates know she can do it. So they got me higher, you know, than I'm already, and my dog is higher because it's feeling all my vibes and everything that, that are coming off, you know, because boy, it's, it's nerve wracking. Get, I've, seen, I've seen guys' hands like this, you know, guys that have run dogs for years and just, you know, they're just shaking and shaking and shaking them there, oh my gosh, you know. It's the competition. It's, I don't want to let anybody down. I've got myself so worked up that I'm out of my elements. You're shooting for a team, and you don't want to let that team down. At least I wouldn't. You know, I, I mean, I'd want to. I'd want my dog to shine. You know, if any, if there was any time you'd want that dog to shine, it'd be, you know, on that day. Welcome to Huntsville, Alabama team competition in retrieving dogs. Something new, something very, very exciting. Learning more every time we come out here. What a great place, Huntsville, Alabama. Very welcoming to the Super Retriever Series. I'm Tommy Sanders, our guest color analyst. Well, one of our competitors, Rody Best from Page, Texas, the captain of Team Yukonuba's Best. And Rody, we're jumping into Series 2. We've got the first series out of the way, and we are going right into field trial. So what should we look for here? Well, we're going to see three marks today. Three white coated marks, which means the gunner that is throwing the bird out in the field is wearing a white coat. The dog is going to use that white coat to mark the location of each bird. Now, what's interesting about this test is one of the stations is going to retire, which means that gunner is going to go hide in the woods and no longer be there when the dog gets back. In all three series of our competition, of course, the rules remain the same. Four man dog teams on each one and no more than two of those teams can be so-called professionals that's after our hunt savvy test series one and team yukonuba's best roadies team right there on top with 52 points but things can change we're about to get a look now at team country vet here in the drake's four by four team medley competition field test time is now hey, turning one more richard step up on now they made an interesting Hold decision here they put richard up here with Cole, and Richard's an amateur. An interesting decision. Most teams would have preferred probably to put their professionals up first, let them get a good feel for the test, and then let the amateurs come in. Richard Mills from Memphis, Tennessee. He's getting a good look at these marks. This is Cole's specialty. He's very good at these. Richard's looking pretty good himself there, running the dog and then controlling him and showing him all the marks. Cole is eight years old. Yeah, why would it be any different for him? Really good to see how this course sets up as we watch our first team run through it right here. And so far, so good, right, Rody? Yeah, now Cole's got to pick up the next station, which is still a visible gunner. The gunner's out there in a chair. He's easy to mark off of. The dog can see the gunner and knows that that person threw that bird for him. So not much needed here by either one. Richard's just going to send him out there and let him pick it up, let him hunt off that station. Uh, pretty straightforward hunt. The dog goes out and hunts off the gunner station, uh, does a pretty good job on it. The key to this whole test is the next bird. Um, getting this bird out of the way and then getting ready for that long retired out there. That gunner that was out there is no longer there. So once Cole picks this up, this is mo mostly just to kind of burn off the dog's memory, um, tire him out a little bit, and then when the dog gets back and we've got one bird left, does that dog still have the stamina and the intelligence and the memory to remember that last bird's out there? 
We're fixing to see. No. Richard's got to do his part here now. If the dog lines up and doesn't give him indication that, that, that he remembers where that bird is, Richard's got to watch and look and see where the dog's looking. You see here, Richard's really trying to work with him and get him lined up in the proper direction. Keep pulling. He's doing a good job. Most people would, would just send the dog and let him do his thing. Richard's saying, no, I'm in, I'm in control of this. I'm going to point you where I want you to go. And when I get you where I want you to go, I will send you. You can see him talking him into it. Each team starts with a perfect score of 20, with each fault, each uh, deviation from the excellent standard, of course, they're going to lose points. Dig, got a boy. Ah, oh, don't check down. Come on. Right. There you go. There you go. Right, right there. J-hook, J-hook, J-hook. Turn in there. Doesn't get much straighter than that right there. This is a very strong performance. Uh, the amateur, letting the amateur run first nice definitely job, paid off in this one. Nice Richard job. Mills, the amateur, and Cole, the eight-year-old black lab, Great performance right there in this field trial segment, series two of our competition and a score of 18. You can see how that judging works right there. And boy, that's an 18, almost perfect. So a great, great boost to team country vet, Handler Richard Mills and Cole getting it done on this day. Richard, you had a solid performance out there setting your team up here in the second series. How do you think that sets y'all going forward? Well, I got, it's got us pumped up. I mean, the first series we were all down we had two twos and I think a six. And uh, Lyle came through very end with an 18 to kind of put us back in this game where I think we're 20 something points out of first place when we started this, this second series. So, you know, we decided to change it up a little bit on the lineup when you go first with Cole was strong in the field trial. And I think he put up a good number there. He, he was definitely solid. And hopefully, you know, it's, it's definitely got, it's got all my team members jacked up. And that's what we need today. I'm trying to make a comeback. Series two is now underway. First dog's already gone. 27 left to go, and we'll see who's on top when we get to the end. Drake Waterfowl 4x4 four four Team Medley competition when we come back. Team Loyal. Heel. This is Joel Porter and Heel. Jack. Drake Waterfowl's 4x4 four four Team Medley is powered by Yukonuba. Huntsville Sports Commission, showcasing one of the South's greatest cities. Waterdog E-Clinics, the world's first 24-7, 365 dog training experience. And by Thunder Equipment. Drake Waterfowl's 4x4 team medley competition continues from here in Huntsville, Alabama. You're into the field trial segment of this and at the line, Mark Chase and Girl. Team Yukonuba Sandhill, Mark from Falls Branch, Tennessee. And he is very, very knowledgeable about field trial competition. Well, when, when I first started, I had a duck dog. I wanted to duck hunt. Uh, the dog was smarter than me. I used to throw rocks to show it where to go. I could only throw the rocks so far. The dog would eventually figure out if you just fake throw a rock, the dog would go that direction. I got a book and started reading and found out that these dogs would stop on a whistle and you would take casts. And I was like, that's pretty cool that a dog would actually listen. I went from that and uh, found out about AKC hunt tests. I started doing that. The first hunt test I ever went to, I ran in. Uh, and uh, from there, I progressed to go to the master level of hunt tests. And hunt tests were wonderful. I had an enjoyable time, met some wonderful people. But being a competitive person, uh, field trials were the ultimate competitive sport for retrievers. So I sort of migrated to that to see if I could train a dog to a level to be competitive against the best in the country. Back to Mark Chase and Girl at the line here. A little bit of pressure on this team, Series 1. They did not do very well. In fact, they scored a zero, so they need to score some points here. I know what Mark's feeling right now. He's a little disappointed in his first series run, and he's probably wanting to do a very good job in the second series. You can see from his look, he's not extremely happy with how things are going so far. Well, it is completed and better than series one. Total points, eight is the number, and of course they wanted a better number than that. Time now for Team Loyal in this medley competition. Heel. Team Loyal, Joel Thank Porter, you. and the dog is Jack. This team from Cherryville, Heel. North Carolina. Heel. And like Mark Chase and Girl, they had a rough Here. series one, scoring Here. a zero there. Here. Here. Now, this is Joel's specialty. He's, he's pretty good out. in the field trial game, so I'm sure good. the team is expecting him to, to perform well at this Here. series. 
here. A little surprised they picked him first this time, that he ran last in the first series. Now maybe they're looking for a different outcome by running him first this time. He's probably the strongest dog on their team as far as the field trial setup goes, so perhaps they're trying to get off to a good start with him. He definitely saw both those birds. And got a good look at that one as well. Jack. Now it's all about memory. He knows where all three of them landed. Can he remember where they landed? A little bit left of the red, orange ribbon, the long bird is. It's halfway between the ribbon and the retreat you can see to the left. No loss of points on that first one, of course. Again, each team starts with a perfect 20 points and the deductions. The final tally is what makes your score. Jack. His teammates look anxious. I'm sure they're hoping for a good score here. What's nice about this is the teammates are behind you, so so these guys have, have done their part. They're, they know where that bird's at, and if Joel can't remember or he needs a little help, they're behind him there to say. All right, you know where it is, Joel? Yeah. Little left of the orange ribbon. Wind still left to right. One handler, one dog at the line, but all four members of the handler part of that overall team feel like they're part of the competition, part of the overall effort here, and that's kind of making it interesting for us. And he's got one more bird left, and Joel's cueing him with the word way out, telling him that bird is way out there. Again, this, this gunner is, is retired. It's no longer out there. There's nothing out there for the dog to remember, but he sure seems locked in and knows where he's going. Jack! Joel sends him very loud, letting the dog know that bird is way out there. I need you to put your high horse on and, and kick in the gears. He's going to wind it right. All right, another few steps. He's going to wind it. Steps, damn it! Come on, cut back. Right there. Dope. Thank you. Oh yeah. Yeah. Is it right there, Jack? It's right there. You got it, man. Oh, oh, woo! Oh, woo! Nice. This team has been hanging on every second of this competition. This perfect run. A Joel Porter and Jack. Look at that score. Total points of 20. No deductions whatsoever showing us how to get it done in the Series 2 competition. <laughs> His team needed that. David Hamilton standing Good by job, with Joel Porter to talk yeah. about just that. How much does this help your team? After yesterday, you said you felt bad you set your team back, but now after a strong performance here, does this put you all back in the game? Uh, you know, it, it really does. It, it gives us that boost anyways. It gets our feet underneath us here in the first. It gets the tide rolling. Uh, the rest of the team's feeling great. Um, we're happy about things. Life's good right now with that. Uh, after the first series scores, we, we really looked at it, and, and the zero we got with the break on Jack doesn't necessarily hurt us as bad as the couple 20s that were given. Um, the, the 20s really hurt us, you know, that a little bit more than what the zero did. Uh, we're able to stay in, and I think there's between sixth place and third place, there's everybody's within six points. Um, so we're right in the hunt. We sure would have loved to have some points out of Jack in the first uh, to put us that much ahead, but I think it's really uh, gives us the boost we were looking for in the second. As a team, we talked about why we were going to run, how we were going to run it, when we were going to run it, what dogs we wanted to put up. Initially, our team plan and our uh, theory was we were going to put Jack last. That way we kind of had a kicker in, the, in our bag uh, to come out with. We looked at the test dog run, lighting conditions, everything like that. Midstream, we changed gears. We totally, totally mixed up our rotation. We went from going to run Jack last to let's bring him out first and see what he can do, um, and with great success. Plenty more to come on this Drake Waterfowl 4x4 team medley when we return. A little history from our host venue, Huntsville, Alabama. Drake Waterfowl 4x4 team medley competition continues part of the Super Retriever Series. What a great host city we have this week, Huntsville, Alabama. Right here in the very foothills of the Appalachian Mountains and Ralph Stone of the Huntsville Sports Commission tells us what this place is all about. Huntsville was founded in 1805 by a man named uh, John Hunt. And then in 1811, it was incorporated as a city and Huntsville was also the first capital of the state of Alabama. Uh, when John Hunt arrived in Huntsville, he found a spring, which is now known as the Big Spring Park International. It was an area that just looked ideal for settlement. 
He had water. He had all the things he needed when he came here. And uh, so that's where he chose to settle in Lake Huntsville, his home, uh, which later became known as Huntsville. We had a real active early uh, years, mainly driven by agriculture and railroad, uh, mostly cotton. And uh, we had a great deal of cotton merchants that would uh, live and stay in Huntsville. A lot of planters came from different areas like Georgia and South Carolina and made their home in Huntsville. So that gave us a real good start uh, to build our community as to what it is today. After uh, agriculture, which is still very strong, but uh, it's taken a back seat to our high tech community and the space industry. Uh, Werner von Braun came here and settled and put the first man on the moon. Uh, and Huntsville had a great part in making all of that happen. And then our high-tech industries, the defense industry, uh, all the computer and high-tech things that happen uh, take place in our research park, which is the second largest park, research park in the nation. That's what drives Huntsville now. Big Spring is one of our, our main attractions in Huntsville. That's where a lot of the special events, the festivals, and all the art. The art museum is in the uh, Big Spring International. Uh, our civic center is right across the street. So it's the hub of activity for our downtown. A part of Big Spring uh, Park is a canal, the Indian Creek Canal, that runs all the way to the Tennessee River. And that's another reason why John Hunt found this, uh, this area to be very attractive. He could float the uh, cotton and the other agricultural uh, materials from the Tennessee River up the canal to the downtown, which was Cotton Row at the time, uh, where all the cotton merchandise uh, guys would have the merchants would be there to buy and sell cotton. So it's a, it's a great uh, opportunity for people to ship agricultural products in. There's always the story about Jesse James robbing the bank that's at the, the top of our Big Spring uh, Park. We've got a large rock wall that separates the park from the bank area and they was, the story goes that he robbed the bank, jumped off the rock wall, broke his leg when he hit the ground, but he still was able to get on his horse and take off and was not ever, uh, wasn't caught at the time. Thanks again, Ralph Stone from the Huntsville Sports Commission. All that great history on Huntsville. It has been a great place, Rody, for all our competitors and families to come. A lot to explore, a lot to see here in Huntsville. But, hey, there's a little fun and games when we're at work as well at the line. Yeah, there's a little stress reliever that we were doing while we were waiting our turn to run. One of the funniest things I've seen in a long time. This is dude, Stephen Durrance's dog. Easy to have that uh, intense concentration when there's a little food <laughs> at the end of the task. So a lot of fun here in Huntsville, Alabama. Once again, we're very happy to be here. And we've got more to bring you. Coming up, Team Tritronics will try their luck when we continue. Drake Waterfowl's 4x4 Team Medley has been brought to you by Drake Waterfowl. Innovators in waterfowl hunting. DNT Media, we make market leaders. And powered by Yukonuba. Drake Waterfowl 4x4 team medley competition continues from here in Huntsville, Alabama. Team Tritronics trying their luck here. The team at the line, Bobby Wills, his dog Rip. Now this is uh, this is the field trial aspect of the competition. This is series two. And Bobby Wills, Rip too. They are well, well versed field trial competition but today things have turned out a little bit rougher than they had expected that he got the go bird real well he got the little short bird real good he went for the retired bird he didn't miss it he didn't miss it five yards to the left but he didn't smell it he hooked in the woods to the left and when he got in the woods he found a retired gunner and a lot of these dogs are trained to find the gunner even though the gunner's retired. When you dig in there and you find the gunner, then you'll find the bird. Well, he found the gunner in the woods and hunted all around the gunner after he found him. And, and uh, he never would come back out. And then when I decided to handle, he just flat turned me off. He just said, I got it, leave me alone. I'm not, I'm not working with you today because they're listening. Well, Rip had to be picked up out there. So much, much disappointment for this team, Bobby Wills. Let us know all about that and the way he told that uh, interesting story. So, Team Titronics, we'll have to do better next time. We're on to Team Gaston Custom Calls. This is going to be Thad Simmons and his dog, Reggie, this team from Thomaston, Alabama. And I've known Thad for some time. Him and I have run some events together. We <laughs> stayed together at some events, ran the Grand together. Uh, really nice guy. Uh, haven't seen this dog perform Here. Here. before, but uh, I know Thad's a hard worker and... Uh, this dog is actually out of uh, 
Alex Washburn's dog. Alex Washburn. Actually, Alex Washburn, if you'll remember from old Super Retriever Bye. Series programs and her dog, uh, Reddy. Got to remember Reddy. Well, Reddy was the, the daddy of Reggie right here, so we are watching some history and some uh, some heritage in action. It's a very good-looking dog. Runs well, enthusiastic, happy. This team placing third place so far in Series 1. 36 points overall, so they're looking to move up in those standings, and this, uh, this run is crucial. He definitely seems to know where this bird is. He's all right right there. He's dead on it right there. Come on, boy. So far, so good. Everything sir, perfect. Sir. Bad right. Simmons and Reggie. Hey, Joe, Atta boy. Hey, take your time. He's looking at it now. Let that skinny Let tree. Let him have it. Let him have it if you want. Hey, that skinny it. tree. Yeah. But we can hear Thad there asking his teammates right. where exactly this bird is. They're using a skinny tree in the background to mark the line of that bird. So Thad was double checking with his teammates before he sent the dog. Back. Well, the dog sure lined up well. He must really remember where that bird is. That Th didn't have to do a whole lot to push or pull in one direction or the other. The dog lined up by himself and seemed to really remember where that bird was. Well, if Reggie can pull this one off, it's going to be a perfect score for Thad and Reggie. It's going to be great news for Team Gaston Custom Calls. He's starting to break down. That's a good area to break down. He's close to the area of the fall where that bird landed. Break down. Break down. Break down. Come on, baby. Break down. There you go. Yeah. Well, wow. Hell yeah. Perfect yes, score, 20 points. The team goes crazy. Gaston Custom Calls is definitely back in the thick of it. Third Man. place after Series 1. They're doing very well here. In Series 2, the field trial competition. Much reason for celebration. Team Gaston Custom Calls right there tied for the top position. Series 2 competition here along with Team Loyal. When we come back, Team Yukonuba's best. Rody, you'll be in action when we return to Huntsville, Alabama. We'll see what they can get done when we see you next time.